Welcome back, everybody, to another breakdown and review of Loki with Fat Ninja Studios. I am, of course, your mischievous host, Raging Antibody, and before we dive into it, a few things need to be discussed. Jackie and I have been trying to figure out how to grow the channel by giving you all the content you want while also making content we enjoy. However, it seems our channel is often lost amongst the millions. So, dear viewer, we want to ask you what your thoughts are on the videos that we put out. What do you like about them? And what would you like to see more of? Please leave us a comment below or reach out on, uh, to us on Twitter at Studios Fat. If you're a first time visitor, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give our video a like. It would really help us out. For those of you already subscribed, we want to say thank you very, very much. We also apologize for the lateness of our last upload. Uh, YouTube and Disney in particular had some issues with some of the clips that we used uh, so it took a few tries to get it up on the on the channel. All right, a quick recap on last week's episode. Loki and Sylvie ended up being run out of the TVA and getting stranded in an apocalypse scenario on a moon with a planet crashing into it. However, during their time on the planet, the two Loki variants got closer to one another and we got qu quite a bit of backstory. The big revelation was that the TVA agents are actually variants themselves. With a daring escape plan to get back to the TVA, it unfortunately goes awry and it seems that all hope is lost right before the credits roll. Episode 4 begins with a flashback to Asgard where a young Sylvie is playing with some figurines when suddenly a portal opens behind her and Renslayer steps through, wearing the typical uniform of a TVA agent instead of her regular suit. She takes young Sylvie into custody and brings her before a judge, a random man who's never really introduced by name before Sylvie snatches her temp pad from her and escapes into an unknown timeline. The flashback ends and we see present day Renslayer standing before the gold doors. She walks through into a vast open room filled with strange mist and glowing red symbol in the distance. The mist subsides and sitting in three chairs are the timekeepers. The opening credits kick off and we see Mobius waiting for Renslayer outside the doors. He asks her if she's in any trouble, to which she scolds him that they're all in trouble, that the Variant ne nearly made it in inside to kill the Timekeepers. Mobius tries to calm her down before asking to have access to Hunter C-20, and then Renslayer tells him that's impossible, as C-20 is dead, her mind having been scrambled by the enchantment Sylvie did on her. Mobius isn't convinced entirely though, but Renslayer suggests that he keep that information to himself or it would cause a panic. We flash forward to Sylvie and Loki sitting on a rock, watching the planet of Lamentus break apart in the atmosphere and rain down all over the moon. Loki apologizes to her, and Sylvie talks about what she remembers of Asgard. She waxes poetically about what it means to be a Loki, and how no matter where she hid, the TVA always found her until she discovered the apocalypses. The universe wants to break free, so it manifests chaos. Like me being born the goddess of mischief. Loki tells her it's not over for them just yet, and they briefly touch. A budding romantic chemistry seems to be forming. Back at the TVA, B-15 asks Mobius about C-20, and he deflects the question, luckily interrupted by a sudden spike in the timeline. Unlike the way branches normally form, this one seems to deviate completely in a straight line. This allows the TVA to hone in on the location of the Loki variants and open portals for them to escape the dying moon. They are immediately taken into custody and separated from one another. Mobius makes a few snide remarks toward Loki, who is surprisingly more concerned with where they've taken Sylvie. The TVA drags Loki into Mobius' office, who continues to berate him for being a bad friend, before opening a temp portal to a time loop on Asgard and throwing him into it. Right before he enters, however, Loki tells him that the TVA are lying to him. Mobius! Okay, no, 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 let, let him one last desperate trick from the desperate trickster. Go ahead. The TVA is lying to you. In this time loop, Lady Sif encounters him and knocks him around before scolding him for cutting off a chunk of her hair every three minutes. He tries to tell her the truth to get her to help him escape, but this backfires on him immediately. Back at the TVA, Mobius visits Renslayer in her office, asking permission to interview Sylvie. Renslayer denies him, telling him it's too dangerous and that he should just stick to his own Loki. As he leaves, he catches up with B-15, who is standing outside of the room where they are holding Sylvie. 
She seems visibly shaken by her encounter at Roxcar, having been enchanted by Sylvie and experiencing her own memory leaks. There are four other TVA guards standing at the door, ready to prune her at a moment's notice. Before Mobius walks off, B-15 stops him and asks if Loki said anything to him. Mobius tells her that he said, the TVA is lying to me. B-15, though, looks concerned, but returns to her post. We cut to the time loop again and Loki has given in. As soon as Sif enters, he tells her how sorry he is, telling her he does these things only because he craves attention. Instead of beating him again, Sif helps him up to his feet and tells him, you are alone and you always will be. Suddenly, Mobius enters and tells him it's time to answer a few questions. He takes Loki back to his office to interrogate him. Using manipulative tactics, he reveals Loki's feelings for Sylvie, which seem to be romantic. Loki demands to know if she's okay, in which Mobius initially lies and says she's already been pruned. This enrages him, but Mobius continues to push him, telling him how narcissistic it is for him to fall in love with a version of himself. You like her. Does she like you? Was she pruned? I mean, no wonder you have no clue what caused the Nexus event on Lamentus. Both of you are just swooning over Mobius, each other, I guess. Tell it's me the, the apocalypse. Proof. Two variants of the same being, especially you. Loki continues to try to play it off before getting angry enough to shout at Mobius, asking him if she is alive or not. Mobius relents, telling him, for now. Loki continues to be vague, but Mobius isn't having it, which ends up in another shouting match until Loki spills the beans about how all the TVA agents are actually variants with their memories erased. You're all variants! Everyone who works at the TVA! The Timekeepers didn't create you, they kidnapped you from the timeline and erased your memories. This clicks with Mobius, especially about how weird B-15 was being earlier and what happened to Hunter C-20. However, needing further proof, he has Loki thrown back into the time loop for the time being. Outside in the hallway, B-15 is having a full-on panic attack, her memories flooding back in. She enters the room to where Sylvie is being kept, armed, as if she's about to prune her. The door closes behind her, and however, she then disarms herself, opening up a portal and telling Sylvie to accompany her. Back in Renslayer's office, Mobius signs his name to some documents, officially closing the case on the two Loki variants. She then asks him, If you could go anywhere, anytime, where would it be? But Mobius actually changes the topic, asking her in return about why she wouldn't let him interrogate Sylvie. She tells him that they couldn't risk another escape, reminding him that it's already happened twice that the other Loki has gotten away. Renslayer again attempts to divert the conversation, but Mobius just placates her by saying he likes where he is right now. Renslayer goes on to tell him that she personally received word from the timekeepers that they want him to be present at the pruning of the two variants, that he'd finally get to meet them. Mobius acts excited, but internal bells are going off in his mind. Renslayer takes notice of his unenthusiastic response and asks him what's going on. Mobius brings up C-20 and how sudden her death was and then quickly brushes it off as just being tired after seeing how defensive Renslayer becomes. Mobius uses his charm to distract Renslayer into rearranging her trophies, while quickly pocketing her time pad. He then excuses himself after only one drink, suggesting he just needs to get some sleep. We cut to the Rock's Cart Apocalypse where B-15 has brought Sylvie. Sylvie thinks B-15 is here to fight it out, but instead she reveals to her that she's been getting her memories back. B-15 accuses her of using some sort of magic deception, but Sylvie explains that she can't create memories, only manipulate the ones that are already there. This prompts B-15 to ask her to unlock the rest of her memories, experiencing a whole life that the TVA had erased from her mind. We jump back to the TVA, where Mobius hides himself in the library and pulls out Renslayer's tempad. He scrolls through to find Hunter C-20's profile, while, which is now labeled as deceased, and clicks play on her last debriefing. In the video, C-20 seems fully aware of herself, having gotten her memories back all the way, and tries to advocate for her freedom to go back to her original life. During the last moments of the interview, however, Renslayer steps into view before shutting the camera off suggesting she prunes C-20 to cover it all up. This deeply disturbs Mobius, who sets off to retrieve Loki from the time loop. 
In the time loop, Loki is just laying on the floor, infinitely suffering from the kick to the balls that Thief delivers every few minutes. When Mobius enters, Loki, of course, is ready to engage in a battle of wits and insults, but Mobius just tells him to shut up and listen. He tells him that he believes in him, always has, but that Loki couldn't get out of his own way half the time. He also reiterates the question of whether Loki believes he should always be alone, because the Nexus event that was beginning to happen when he and Sylvie touched on the dying Lamentus One could possibly be the key to bringing down the entire TVA. Do you really believe you deserve to be alone? I don't know. Then you better figure it out quick, because the Nexus event the two of you caused, I think whatever that connection is, can bring this whole place down. Mobius makes Loki absolutely swear that Sylvie didn't implant those memories in Hunter C-20, before hatching a plan with him to get Sylvie and take on the Timekeepers. However, as soon as they leave the time loop, Renslayer along with four TVA soldiers are waiting for them, armed with pruning sticks. Renslayer calls Mobius out on taking her tempad, and he tries playing it off as if he grabbed it by mistake, but Renslayer already knows he's lying. Mobius submits to his fate, remarking on her earlier question of where he would go if he could go anywhere. He tells her he returned to his old life, which probably had a jet ski, where he could be happy and enjoying his life as a free man. Renslayer gives the order to prune him, and Mobius is disintegrated. Loki is once again taken into custody to be brought before the timekeepers. Along the way, they also grab Sylvie, who has been returned to her interrogation room, but not before Renslayer finds out that B-15 had been in to see her and gives the order to prune B-15. When they arrive at the gold doors, Sylvie and Loki exchange a moment of compassion, glad to see one another alive. Okay. They are taken into the golden elevator, and here's where Sylvie finally asks Renslayer why she even came for her in the first place. Renslayer replies coldly, I don't remember as if Sylvie's life were that unimportant. They reach the chamber with the timekeepers in it, and Loki and Sylvie are presented to them. The timekeepers lay their judgment, telling them that they are no threat to them, but of course Sylvie and Loki have more to say. When Renslayer tries to use her time twister to rein Sylvie back in, it doesn't seem to work, and surprise, B-15 shows up. She disables the time callers, tosses Sylvie a weapon, then mockingly recites the TVA motto before taking on the guards closest to the elevator doors and getting knocked out. For all time. Always. Sylvie and Loki take out the remaining guards and a final fight between Renslayer and Sylvie results in Renslayer being laid out cold. After everyone is either dead or knocked out, the variants approach the timekeepers who bargain that they could talk about this, but Sylvie declines, tossing her sword at one of them in the center and cutting off its head. The head sparks and hits the ground with a loud thud, wires protruding from the neck, and the other two begin to laugh. The reveal of them being robots is insane, and led us to a theory which we will discuss at the end of the video. Anyway, the robots are all shut down, and it seems that this Wizard of Oz storyline is going to lead us to someone far off pulling the strings through smoke and mirrors. Loki can't believe how fake the whole thing was, but assures Sylvie that they will find out who is behind it all. He then begins to tell her his true feelings for her when all of a sudden, he begins to spark and disintegrate. Renslayer has just pruned Loki, right before he could tell her he loves her. Sylvie quickly disarms Renslayer, holding her captive and demanding her tell her everything, and then we cut to the credits. However, the episode does not end here, as a post credit scene begins to roll. Loki wakes up on the ground of a ruined city, thinking he's finally arrived in hell. However, he is greeted by four individuals. A large black man that looks to be wielding a version of Thor's hammer, Kid Loki, an alligator wearing Loki's trademarked horned helmet, and an old man version of Loki, dressed in the comic book accurate green and yellow spandex costume. The old man Loki tells him to come with them if he wants to live, and then the screen cuts to black. So it looks like getting pruned does not mean death after all. Now, for our theory. In the first episode, we came across the aura scanning machine, in which Loki was asked before stepping through if he was a robot or not. This made us think of the Doombots and how potentially the TVA had been sent after variants of Doctor Doom deviating from the timeline. 
Then in episode 4 now, it's revealed that three timekeepers in the chamber are also just robotic puppets. And finally, the people who get pruned end up in this alternate reality world where they look like they've been battling for survival. Instantly, this made us think of Battle World. But what if the entire Loki series isn't leading into Doctor Strange or Spider-Man sequels, but instead it's leading into the future Fantastic Four film by settling, setting up Battle World? Why Fantastic Four, you say? Because God King Doom, of course, rules supreme in this dimension after all. Battle World, in Marvel Comics, happens after the collapse of the multiverse, when heroes and villains alike battle the Beyonders and eventually Doctor Doom is able to acquire their powers and become omnipotent. During the final incursion, Doom creates Battle World, also known as Latverion, to house the remaining realities in these domains separated by a huge shield barrier. In the comics, the three domains are named Deadlands, Perfection, and New Xandar. Doom has also created a police force of sorts called the Thor Corps to make sure there are no breaches. While you can leave one domain for another, it is highly discouraged and requires special permission from each of the domain's respective barons. Any disputes between the domains are handled in the court of Castle Doom, where Dr. Stephen Strange is the sheriff. In the universe where Battleworld exists, there are only two other celestial bodies, one of which is Johnny Storm, turned into a sun, and the other is Nowhere, which acts kind of like the planet's moon. Mr. Fantastic, working with the Maker, and the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, are eventually able to strip Doom of his powers and recreate the multiverse, which inadvertently creates a substance known as ISO-8. After a few clashes trying to retrieve the new substance, the remaining fragments are brought back together and Battleworld is also reconstructed alongside the multiverse. A group of champions form a team called the Civil Warriors to protect the substance from anyone else trying to steal it. All in all, we believe this is where the Loki TV series is heading, especially since Secret Wars and such are coming to Disney Plus in the near future. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that Doctor Doom is behind it all, but given the track record of the two previous attempts to bring him to the big screen with incredible failure, this would mark an epic introduction for one of the smartest and most dangerous villains in the Marvel Multiverse. As for Episode 5, we will most likely get the various different Lokis battling it out for dominance on this new planet, getting variants like President Loki, teaming up with other variant characters to forge an escape plan. Who knows? Maybe we will even see Hydra Captain America or Maestro Hulk in a cameo appearance. What are some of your theories? Leave us a comment down below. We want to thank you for taking the time to watching our breakdown and review. Overall, this is one of the best episodes of the series so far, and it has us chomping at the bit for the next one. I give it a 9 out of 10. Damn near perfect. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to enchant that bell icon to be notified when we release our next video. You can reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, or join our Discord. The link is provided below in the description. For those of you who have subscribed, again, I want to thank you all, and if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see more of or what you'd like to see less of, please feel free to drop us some comments. Again, I've been your host, Raging Anybody, and before I go, I just want to tell you that not all surprises are bad. Sometimes, just giving a friend a call to hang out or maybe sending a thank you card for someone who did you a favor goes a long way. It's the little things that lift people's spirits. Make sure you watch out for each other. We're all we've got. Have a great day. Take care.